Hello, good evening and welcome to The Stands. It is live from our studio here at Adesawe in Accra and also live around the world on 3news.com. It is 10 p.m. here in Ghana and we are live. My name is Martin Monsieur Dudata. This evening we'll be touching on the major issues that have made headlines within the week and then also uh, get to hear from you as well. And we are starting from the major stories making headlines in Ghana today. And 42 new charges have been proffered against the founder of defunct UT Bank, Prince Kofi Amwa Bing, together with five other persons. This was after the state earlier discontinued the case against Mr. Amwa Bing at the circuit court here in Accra. Ghana's parliament is demanding the presentation of a new bill from the Attorney General to replace the existing framework for legal education in Ghana. The House has also asked the General Legal Council to commence the remarking of scripts of students who failed in last year's entrance exams. And the minority in Parliament wants government to suspend all agreements related to the construction of the Polugu multi-purpose dam. They have thereby boycotted all activities related to the approval of the agreement. And the Ghana Water Company has begun dredging its intake point at Dabwase in the western region to increase water production as a result of illegal mining. The company says it is producing 3.5 million gallons of water daily instead of 4.8 million gallons it, it should be producing at the treatment plant. All right, so those are the local stories making headlines. Let's find out what's happening also around the world. We're starting from the United States of America, where you would know that U.S. President Donald Trump has been standing impeachment. The breaking news happening a few minutes ago indicate that President Donald Trump has been acquitted of the impeachment charges. So President Trump has been acquitted on the second impeachment uh, charge, obstruction of Congress, by a vote of 53 to 47 Unlike the first, this vote was partisan. All Democrats voted to convict, or, and, uh, to convict Donald Trump and all Republicans voted to acquit him. Trump has now been acquitted in his impeachment trial as expected. He is the third U.S. president in history to face and survive a Senate trial. The first one happened in 1565, then in 1999, and then also now we have 2020. So that's the breaking news happening in the United States of America. Donald Trump remains president of the US and he has been acquitted of the impeachment charges. To Africa now, and specifically Lesotho, the wife of the Prime Minister of Lesotho has been formally charged in court with murdering uh, the previous wife of her husband in 2017. First Lady Mazaya Thabani has not yet asked uh, to, uh, to plead. She surrendered to police on Tuesday for questioning. Prime Minister Thabani uh, Thomas himself has also been questioned. Also, Nigeria's President Muhammad Buhari has unveiled a new visa policy which he says is intended to attract innova uh, innovation, specialized skills and knowledge from abroad. The new policy sees the introduction of visas on arrival for short visits for holders of passports of African Union countries. The government also announced a new biometric visa database which is uh, able to conduct checks for those in interval uh, watch lists. And finally, Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Rab uh, Ryabkov says Moscow is alarmed by the U.S.'s nervous decision to deploy low-yield nuclear missiles on submarines. Russia said the deployment of W-76 to warhead in the name of strengthening deterrence had caused great concern over U.S. nuclear strategy. All 
All right, so those are the stories making headlines both locally and internationally. Time now, though, for the big one. All major issues we'll be looking at, and we're starting from the Criminal Investigations Department, the CID of the Ghana Police Service. So uh, the police service says it is investigating six persons in connection with the missing excavators and other seized equipment used in illegal mining. The six suspects were arrested in connection with 500 missing excavators seized by the Operation Vanguard Task Force. The suspects include the suspended Central Regional Vice Chair of the New Patriotic Party, Horace Echo AUC. The five other uh, arrested individuals said to be accomplices of Mr. AUC are Frederick AUC, Joel Asamoa, Adam Haruna, Frank Jan, and John Ahin. The suspects have been cautioned on the offence of stealing and abetment to steal. Meanwhile, the minority in Parliament has served notice to haul the Environment, Science and Technology, Lands and Natural Min uh, Resources Ministers, both of them, before the Mines and Energy Committee over the missing excavators. Adam Mutawakilo is a ranking member on the Mines and Energy Committee in Parliament. The President's fight against Galamsi was a ploy to get rid of the ordinary Ghanaian who uses who and catalysis to mine and to pave way for big wigs of the party to take over the illegal mining or what we call Galamsi. Now, today we are talking about the vanishing of excavators and matters arising. First, let me discuss the excavators. If you follow the Minerals and Mining Act, as amended in 2015 under President Mahama, Section 99.5 is clear as to where a seized excavator or confiscated excavator should be put. It stated clearly that when equipment or products, product means uh, semi-processed gold or other uh, mineral, should be kept under the custody of the police. And in this case, the law was put aside and the minister, Professor Frepo uh, Mbwati, decided to have his own law as to where the excavators should be put because of the intention to ensure that these excavators get vanished. What is the minority going to do? As far as we are concerned, we will first of all push for the minister, both the Reform Party and the Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, to appear before, before us. La, to appear before us, that's one. The Two, the committee, the, the committee, but the chairman isn't around. Two, we would like to have clear evidence why they breach the law. And three, why he has not resigned. And why the president, also the president responsibly, why he has not fired him. And that tells you the interest President Nana Kufuado has in the illegal mining that is going on. He's benefiting greatly from it. And as indicated, How? benefiting. How? His 2020 election, <laughs> having to head they are doing this to support the party towards 2020 campaign. All right, so uh, we are going to stay on this subject matter, and it is one of the issues we are looking at this evening. I've been joined in studio by Komla Kluche. Uh, he is our parliamentary correspondent and also uh, one of the editors here at uh, Media General. And then also Nancy Vukania. She is on Sunrise uh, Morning Show. Every morning when you tune in at 6 to 10, she definitely will be on the show. You'll get to hear her thoughts and opinions, and that's all we'll be hearing today as well on a number of the issues we'll be discussing today. We're starting from the issue of the missing excavators. We'll look at that. We'll also touch on the Airbus bribery scandal where Ghana has been named as um, 
part of five, Af uh, no, in fact, 20 countries, and Ghana is the only country among the list to have said to have been bribed, um, you know, or engaged in some bribery of a sort uh, regarding the acquisition of some aircrafts for Ghana's armed forces. Then the other issue we'll look at today will have to do with the, um, the inter-party resistance against the compilation of a new voters register. The name alone, uh, <laughs> pretty interesting. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yes. Thank you for joining us. Good evening, Martin. Okay, we are starting with the issue of um, the missing or uh, the excavators mm. that have disappeared. We'll be looking at what the law says shortly regarding mm. what should be done when people who have flouted the law right. are caught mm. and then their equipment um, confiscated. What happens in the process? We'll look at it. But first of all, I'm sure you were surprised, Nancy, uh, mm. as almost all of us were when we heard that in excess of over 200 excavators yeah and these are not like mobile phones or books or little things you can pick and put in your pocket nope. but this is heavy machinery to have been told that these machines have disappeared into thin air or missing should have hit you as a surprise were you um, it did hit me as a surprise because like you said this is earth moving material this is not um little consumer goods that people can pick and put in their pockets. You know, this is heavy, heavy machinery. But um, with the way that the Gallam Stop and the Operation Gun Vanguard, you know, came mm. about with all, all the merrymaking and all of the noise that came about it, it was likely to have, you know, been handled in a certain way that would result in this sort of outcome. Um, it, was, it, was, it was quite in a rush. So like many other things, or like how we handle many other things, the initial, like Nigerians would say, the initial gra, -gra mm. you know, is always very exciting. We always have high expectations, but it's never really thought through to what will happen, you know, after the initial arrests and confiscations and so on. Like you clearly says, um, the, you know, the law has stipulations, mm. you know, for what should be done with the equipment, something like submitting them or when once they've been collected, you know, mm. allocating them to public agencies, you know, within 60 days. We don't know what happened afterwards, but it looks as if they were just collected, put in some place. You know, till further notice. Yeah, that's 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 the impression I'm getting. We would look at, uh, and again, I think there were the clearly laid out rules of what should have happened. Mm. And so, if those laws or the, the, those rules were flouted, then it means someone must take the fall for it. Right. But Komla, what are your preliminary comments on this? To <laughs> <laughs> uh, see, I'm I'm surprised. I mean, it would be shocking if. You are asking me that. I'm not surprised. Well, you expect this sort of thing. You I'm not surprised. No, you think it's, no. it's <laughs> normal for <laughs> well, oh, these oh, kinds oh. of things to get missing oh, like that? No, this is moving equipment, Komla. <laughs> <laughs> if even yeah, they, so they were saloon cars, <laughs> yeah. you can understand. You can that understand. Well, and to move machines like that, you even need to decouple them, right. you know, separate the parts so you can move them easily. Welcome to Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, is it disappointing that you don't have no, any faith in the support. system whatsoever? The point is that, you see, <laughs> the issue is that, look, when the president, I think about two years ago, mm. when he says that he is ready to put the presidency on the line, or his, his uh, presidency on the line, presidency on the line, seriously speaking, I was very much encouraged mm. that the Galamsey fight was going to go, I mean, I, I, uh, that stretch where we will see a lot of, uh, so to speak, improvement. I knew it was not going to be wiped off entirely, mm. but I knew we would see a lot of, um, uh, 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 a lot of improvement. Mm. Looking at the fact that the president, I mean, yes, we've had uh, for John Mills, John Mahama, all of them, mm. to, um, um, the commitment to Galamse we cannot underestimate it. Mm. But the president of the republic, as we have now, His Excellency Nanado Danko Kufado, for him to have been vociferous about it, in fact, not just him, even there were chiefs in the country, kings in the country, mm. who supported him with all the forces they had. And looking at the people he put in charge of it to have disappointed him to this much why must i be surprised about it mm. i should not be surprised about it we have had instances where we have had reports 
from uh, members of the Operation Vanguard team who um, um, uh, 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 video recordings, audio recordings, pictures indicating that these people have been compromised and they have taken money mm. and no, absolutely nothing was done about it. Mm. I mean, I, I think why would I be surprised? Uh, the more reason why I'm, I, I have an element of surprise is because of exactly what you've spoken about, the energy behind when this whole thing started. Yes. I mean, how the president spoke passionately about this, this entire thing. But what took me a little bit back when it comes to this issue was when this uh, Aisha, Aisha Huang. Huang lady was deported, yeah. you know, without having to serve her jail term in Ghana. She was extradited. I don't know if it was carried on over mm. there, but I think the law clearly states that when a foreign national, you know, gets a, a, a summary conviction, they are supposed to serve the term here fully and then be extradited afterwards, yeah. and that didn't happen. So when that happened, you know, it just cast a bit of a shadow on yeah. the whole thing to make it look like, well, there could be one or two misgivings here and there. But I, I, do, I do not think, I, I, I will beg to differ sarcastically. I'm, <laughs> I'm using this advisedly. Mm. I'll beg to differ sarcastically. You are at liberty to. If, if somebody tells me now that those excavators are missing, Mm. I, 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 I don't want to believe it, even though I'm not shocked. Mm. Because, you see, two years ago, then Minister of Lands and Natural Resources, John Peter Amel, okay, mm. justified government's decision to procure some 200 drones. They said sophisticated drones. <laughs> right. And this was at the cost of 3 million US dollars. Mm. 3 million United States dollars. Mm. This was procured. In fact, well, I've not seen the receipt for it. I've not seen the drone, so I can't even tell if it was bought or not. And no, this but is we one got, of the we things. Got the drones in the country, the, but then they were for we, different purposes. Yeah. We were told that the drones were for delivery of uh, supplies, medical supplies. No, plus, no, 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 in surveillance and help monitor especially our uh, coastlines and then also oh, these yes, yes. activities mm. so I it was in I, order I, to say that Martin, that was wait, the reasoning wait, behind wait. the acquisition I, of these I, 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 I would not want to go by that let me read this story from ctfm online uh john amel justifies the purchase of three million dollar drones to fight galam this story was by jonas nyabo written two years ago lands and natural resources minister john peter Mew has defended government's decision to purchase drones worth three million united states dollars to boost the country's fight against illegal mining according to him the drones when acquired can also help the country monitor and deal with the incidents of illegal logging in the country's forest reserves did this did not talk about medical, medical staff yeah. so this was specifically for the monitoring of galamsey activities mm. and also to be used to monitor <laughs> issues regarding deforestation right so where are the drones and from what we were told at the time mm. the drones were supposed to have a central monitoring point mm. located within the seat of government mm. Does the story say where the money was secured to to procure the drones? No, but uh, but you see, Kobla, that is Does um, it say? this position you share because if it's government forms funded, a if it's government funded, I I have to say that sometimes government is at a discretion on how they use you know the materials. The that they if it's if it's something that you go and take a loan for. You know, and say and tell the people this is it, and you get parliament to approve it. Then well, you can't. Shift. The funding bit was not captured. However, yeah. however, you knew very well that these were the things that the government touted so well. In fact, one of the reasons why John uh, Peter Mew was voted the minister within the period, and I think yeah. there was a group that gave yeah. him that, um, and I, I was was how how proactive he was in really dealing with this one. I do not I do not think that um, where the drones procured that is what we need government to, to tell, tell us. us. No, the but, Ministry of Environment fast Science forward to present technology. day. Hmm. As of the time the fight against Galamsey started, clearly some successes were chalked because 
it stopped or it reduced drastically. For a Equipment while. Equipment were seized. In mm. fact, well, for, for a reasonable, for a a reasonable Martin, length I of time. If, if you and say then some also, come, come away, let me just land. And then also, we even had the communities reporting that because mm. of the, uh, the, the cessation of these illegal activities, the water bodies had become clearer, the, their farmlands have been saved. So we had made progress. In fact, it was through that that all these excavators were uh, seized and counted to that amount where we are told it was between 400 and something and 500 excavators. So it meant that they had gone on the ground, they had done some work, and then stopped the activities mm. uh, and then seized all these equipment. No, 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 the no, no, problem no. we have now is that why is it that you didn't continue in the right steps you were taking and then right continue after seizing with. these equipment, you allow them to disappear. That is where the problem is that's, now. That's what I'm yeah. saying. It's a matter of law, really. Yeah, that's so they're talking about law. law. Let's now go and see what exactly, what the mm. specifics are regarding what the law should say. Because already the minority in parliament is uh, asking the, is saying that they will hold the um, Environment, Science and Technology Minister yeah. and then also the Land and Natural Resources Minister but to parliament. Go, because I, yeah. I think that if, if some of these things were followed through, we won't even be here. Exactly. This is the reason exactly. why I disagree with you if here. you say that some successes have been chopped. Where? Successes At least the initial, the initial, the but initial fight. How, how, how did they? The initial how did they fight. They, yes. How Just did they, they last month, you and I were out doing stories on on uh, from central and western region about the shortage of um, water. Yes. Clean water because uh, of and, activities. And absolutely. So we don't. The rest what I have to say. This makes complete nonsense of that issue of the successes. If indeed the Galamse fight had done the best it should, we wouldn't have been where we are now for 400 excavators. These are oh, huge machines. And, 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 but but that, you know what? Com this is not cocaine turned no, into the concern, no, no, you know, the concern is that these equipment are missing. It, how how were they seized if there was no fight, if there was no activity? Who was I mean, in charge? We did we something. Also, we Who also, was in charge? And we, I think as a country, hmm. as a country, and thanks again mainly to the media because the media started all this Galamse fight, hmm. we got the entire country talking, which kicked government into action, right. setting up the, the anti Galamse tax force, hmm. the Operation Vanguard, etc. And we got, we started getting results. That's the point I'm making. We started seeing we results. Started doing we something. just didn't finish up the race right. we had started. Yeah. I think just at the point we started seeing clearer waters and we'd be able to deal with some persons who had been arrested. Everybody went to sleep. Yeah, that is why I want to ask a critical question. At, at he the, says the who law. was in charge? Who was in charge? Because we don't know what the funding you know, was like for this Operation Vanguard. We don't know who was monitoring it. We don't know who is in charge of evaluating you know, the successes of this group. We the fact of that. the matter is that we the Operation that. Vanguard was not going to be a long term thing because mm, it's very expensive yeah. to keep them in the right. field. There was absolutely no way this was so going to be probably uh, underlying uh, issues. Yes. Yeah. But you see, the issue is that somebody must take responsibility mm. for all of this. If we have a, 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 a vice chairman of a political party who allegedly, okay, has been accused mm. that he is behind. So so and so, yeah. the disappears. Yeah, okay. How did he get into the picture? Who and who were the who and who are the cabal? Yeah. Mm. He obviously could would not have done this alone if indeed he did it. Yeah. We, all, I mean, a number of a number because of because he's not uh, work. He citizens. doesn't work with the district assembly. No, a number of what citizens. Local role government. What role does he a play of citizens in to all of social this. media mm. to clearly, you know. Uh, vent, vent, vent their, their anger on the entire, I mean, the latter day of how the entire Galamse fight mm. has, has panned out. And you would recall that some individuals had been fingered. Mm. And I think that majority of um, the social commentary indicated that the buck should have stopped with the environment minister, yes, uh, Professor um, Frimpom Boating. In this case, he had also come out to say that they ch the major challenge they had, and it was more or less re-echoing mm. the position of the head of the uh, Galamse Task Force, anti-Galamse Task Force. The problem they had was that when they arrest people and they take them to court, the process is delayed, and that they would have wished for a fast-track court 
set up specifically to deal with these issues. Mm. You know, but because that delayed and it dragged the process, it was part of the reasons why people seem to have sat back. So let's go to the touch trainer and look at what the law said yeah. regarding the equipment that were seized and then also persons that were arrested. And uh, this is the Minerals and Mining Amendment Act 2005, 20, uh, 20, 2015. Um, section 99.5 says that where a person is arrested for an offence under subsection 3 or 4, any equipment used in or associated with the commission of the offence and any product derived from the commission of the offence shall, regardless of the ownership of the equipment or product, be seized and kept in the custody of the police. In the custody of the police. We go on to the next one, which is uh, still section 99.6. A court which convicts a person of an offence under subsection 2, 3 or 4 shall, in addition to the penalty that it may impose, order the forfeiture of any equipment or product seized under the subsection uh, 5 of the state, meaning that <laughs> these ones that are seized, that we clearly saw, should have been handed directly to the police mm -hmm. And then also the persons who have been uh, arrested forfeit the equipment. It means that so far as it's been seized by the state and That's you were it. clearly using it for an illegality, it is seized and the police are supposed to take care of it or it's handed to the police. And you cease to be the owner of these equipment. Now, we move on again to look at uh, this other part that says, that's uh, section 99, uh, seven. subsection 7. The minister shall within 60 days after the confiscation of the equipment or yeah. product, allocate <laughs> the equipment. So it means that the buck stops with the minister, but then let's read on. It says that the minister shall allocate the equipment or product to the appropriate state institutions <laughs> and publish it in the, the Gazette, Gazette. Mm -hmm. the name of the state institution to which the equipment mm -hmm. or yeah. product right. is allocated. Clearly, that also uh, does, does not seem to have been done it because then it yeah. means that when the equipment were seized, they are handed to the police. Then the minister lists them, the owners, the type of equipment, where they were manufactured, year, etc., and then publish or make it public, uh, and that should be gazetted. Clearly, none of that uh, was done. So then it meant that the buck stops with the minister in charge of environment, science, and technology. That is why it looks as if the minority in parliament are eager or bent on hauling him before Parliament to come and answer questions as to where these equipment are. Let's go back to Komla and uh, Nancy. <laughs> yes. I, I, I so now we know... Trying to now, <laughs> no, no, Komla, <laughs> Komla, take it easy. Komla now easy. we know what the law says. Yes. So it meant that although these things were seized and have disappeared, mm. someone should be held responsible. Martin, and yes. this someone, according to the law, should be the mm -hmm. minister. Did you see the seized excavators? We saw pictures of it. Yeah. Did you see it? I yeah. didn't see, but I saw pictures of it. Pictures from where? Are you saying? Did you, are you have you seen pictures of it? Are you insinuating that they were never? Or seized? nothing? Nothing was seized. Martin, <laughs> see, sometimes we we. It's not as if we want to talk mm. too much. Yes, in the fight, I mean, in the heat of event. Went around with the the the, uh, the vanguard team and the uh. ministers and those equipment. What I saw, okay, from stories that colleagues brought, uh. was some of the machines were bent on location. Yes, that I saw. In the we early report, well. yes, in, yes, in, the, in, the, in the early yeah. stages, we heard that uh, they were burning the equipment mm -hmm. and destroying they them were burning on them. the spot. Yeah. Then it got to a point, they said, no, don't burn them, but send them to the district. And in fact, in my last trip to the mm. or yeah. what we call Neo now, mm. at, the, at, at the district assembly, I saw some excavators there. Then I asked, not just there, but I mean, if you even move meters away from the district assembly, you could see that there were a lot of excavators that were parked there. Uh. When I asked, what I was told was that these were not seized excavators uh -huh. from the mining side. This was what the, the district chief executive at the time told me. Well, I mean, apparently, uh, 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 later on, that district chief executive got fired for One whatsoever. Reason. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So... One, who is trying to shield the truth? Now, if you have seized this equipment, was one, the media aware? 
Mm -hmm. If I'm talking about was the media aware, what is the proper inventory? Course, the, the law evidence. is not ambiguous. What you read now is not ambiguous. No, it's clear. It makes Very it clear. clear. You seize the thing, straightforward, you take it to the appropriate state institution. Hearing it is the, the Ghana police, police service. Yep. Service with integrity. <laughs> That's the yes, I believe them. Service with integrity. They were supposed to keep it. And within a period of 60 days, mm. an inventory must be done. And it should be published in the Gazette, indicating the state institution, the, uh, those seized equipment, it. not just the, uh, uh, these huge excavators, yeah. um, shovels and the light, all those things, all including it. cars, mm -hmm. whatsoever. What we are also not told herein is that some pickups, okay, were seized. Where are the pickups as well? Mm. Some accusations have been thrown here in, and uh, but uh, you know, you know, I would not want to go there mm. because no, but, but, but you know, now, these issues now um, we know that some persons have been arrested mm. regarding the disappearance of the, the excavators. Yeah. Key suspect is the uh, vice chair of the NPP in the central region, the former. So former his vice name, chair. his name is there, and then six other persons have been arrested, or five other persons, five uh, including him, are in uh, police grips helping with investigations clearly the minister has to talk and then also we do know that um, uh, other key stakeholders or key players in the industry would have to make a comment on this and uh, you can trust that the Ghana police have been quite active on this uh, they uh, effected those arrests and mm. uh, released a statement um, in that regard naming the persons and I'll just quickly go uh, by the names probably you have an information or two you can help the Ghana police service with it. Um, yeah, the names are clearly, we start from the central regional vice chair of the NPP, Horace Echo Ewusi. Um, the uh, remaining five are Echo, um, Frederick Ewusi and Joel Asamwa. Uh, they have all been cautioned on the offense of stealing with Adnan Haruna, Frank Jan and John Ahin, who have also been cautioned on the offense of abetment of stealing. stealing. So clearly the charge here is stealing. But we also have gathered information indicating that the part, some of these excavators have been found and they are still finding some. The places that they were found are Galamse places or places where the activity has already been, uh, mm. been, been ongoing. So the disappeared, the excavators that disappeared have been, some of them have been found at places where the activity, the illegal activity uh, was still ongoing. So we're hopeful that uh, the police service and the uh, government for that matter would at least in the next few days, mm. say something about this so we can make clear head or tail of it. Nancy, you wanted to make Well, I, I mean, what I can say from all of this that's happening is that I think that Galamse has been back for a minute. Mm. We cannot, you know, belabor the point. It's been back and um, clearly there's been a lot of malfeasance, you know, with the equipment that was seized. And um, I think that the minister has a lot to answer for. And uh, I think that we should just put it to him and he should be ready to give us answers that are relevant, answers that will work for us. And I hope, you know, but for this one, if it happens that he's culpable for one or two mm. reasons, that the president will actually move to do what he has to do and kick him out of office. Because we cannot have a minister of environment who's mm. supposed to take care of our environmental stuff, you know, be involved in, in, in anything on toward yes. or be absent or mm. you know just not do his job because it was really. supposed to be on his watch yes this was okay. this is directly he's he was in ch charge of the committee so yeah, yeah. you know this I'm is hoping, still the stance yeah. on uh, tv3 news at 10. let me have my final bite on this <laughs> I, I mean you know, 30 I, seconds I, I, would, need to take I would want to congratulate the media team we have we have been absolutely <laughs> fantastic yeah. we have done our bit we have informed the public created the awareness in fact the amount of airtime we dedicated to this, <laughs> mm. nobody in this country can ever pay for it. Mm. But the duty bearers have failed the country mm. because of their selfish gains. Mm. They have failed this country. Can but I say, believe, I believe, <laughs> I believe mm. that the Galamsey fight mm. was never won. Do you and think it started though? 
the Galam State fight was started. Yes, I'm it, sure it started. Yes, it's true. But it was never yeah. in fact, it no, we, we didn't complete it. It was it, uh, no, it's a fight it's that is, is yeah, yeah. We start. Yeah. Some, it, it's not a fight that would we, have ended. We can only anyway, create the awareness, but then we, we keep can only going create on. the awareness. But the, it, 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 you see, it, it the back stops with the duty bearers. Who yes. are the duty bearers? The people Certainly. who take yeah. the taxes of you and I to yeah. ensure yeah. that this issue we deal with it properly okay. well somebody must be apologizing to us but we need to know <laughs> where are the drones and what videos did the drones <laughs> capture. capture we okay. need it this is still the stands on, on on tv3 um we will be back shortly when we return we'll be taking a flight on the airbus i will be um government official one and i have my two intermediaries here intermediary five and intermediary eight <laughs> would all be helping us make try to make sense of this um airbus bribery scandal that seemed to have rocked the country a few days ago Stay with us, we'll be back shortly. Thank you for staying with TV3. This is The Stance and uh, it comes to you live every Wednesday where we give the opportunity to our colleagues here and the journalists and reporters here to share their thoughts on the major national issues as they've been covering it um, over time. So the next major issue we are dealing with has to do with the um, Airbus bribery scandal that rocked the country. We're told that Ghana was caught up in the bribery scandal between the periods of 2009 and 2015, but then some active um, you know, uh, activity, there were major activities between 2011 and 2015. Let's find out, you know, get a bit of a background to this. We're told that um, there is a name that has been withheld known as Government Official 1 or GO1 uh, has been <laughs> trending on social media. Some people on social media and the uh, main, um, the current party in power, the New Patriotic Party, say that Government Official 1 is former President John Dramani Mahama. That is yet to be confirmed. Uh, looking through the documentations, uh, no name was mentioned. Also, there's an intermediary five, intermediary six, intermediary seven, intermediary eight, and then uh, it goes on and on. Uh, and they have played different roles. A company was formed called Company D. All these persons have not been named because they were not part of the original ruling. A ruling, uh, uh, an order was given and these persons were not named, have not had the chance to give their side of the testimony, for which reason their names have been withheld. We'll be looking into, into the uh, specifics uh, in detail shortly when my colleagues get to take a bite on it. But first of all, let's uh, go to the touch screen and walk you through some of the major highlights of the entire bus, um, Airbus, uh, I keep saying bus branding, <laughs> bus branding scandal, but the entire Airbus um, bribery scandal. Uh, we are starting from um, what happened in 2011, July 2011, where we are told that the deal was for the procurement of three military aircrafts uh, which Ghana intended to procure from Airbus by um, within this period, 2011 July to June 2015. And between this period, it was the NDC that was in power. The Airbus engaged a middleman known as Intermediary 5 connected to a high-ranking elected government official in brokering the deal. Now, if you look at the ruling uh, from the UK court, Intermediary 5 has been um, described as someone of Ghanaian origin or a UK citizen who has Ghanaian ties, has been living in the UK since childhood, and um, uh, says that he's related related to the high-ranking government official, elected government official. Airbus employees promised to pay a total of 5 million euros as success-based commission to the middleman Intermediary 5. If you read further into the, the ruling, Intermediary 5 had a partner who was named as Intermediary 6. Both of them set up a company which was Company D. That is the name of the company. Now the company was first set up in Ghana, we are told, in um, 2009, December 2009. And then uh, a company with the same name, we're told, was also formed in the UK in February 2010. And these were the persons who were brokering the deal between Ghana, the uh, government of Ghana, and Airbus um, uh, SE. So Airbus employees and the middlemen forged documentations to support and uh, disguise the transaction which was intended to bribe a key government official. Due diligence audit found the transaction inappropriate and the UK court found Airbus liable for condoning bribery. Now you would also want to um, you know, note this, that it was Airbus that reported itself 
for investigation. They realized there were some underhand dealings, reported themselves, and then when the investigation came out, it ended up truly that there were some underhand dealings or bribery um, issues that had come up. And for that reason, they were charged to pay in excess of some three million uh, pounds. And because they had accepted that, yes, we have um, you know, been involved in some anomalies, they were charged, but the persons whom they played the roles with uh, have not been named. That is why their names are currently uh, you know, kept out of the ruling. Let me come to you straight. Uh, the parties, <laughs> the main parties, the NPP and the NDC, have both been reacting to this because the current party in power, the NPP, were quick to speak to the issue and named names. They say former President John Dramani Mahama is the government official, one named in the scandal, but the NDC has also reacted quickly to that. We'll bring you both voices shortly. Mm -hmm. Before that, uh, this time I'll start with uh, Komla. Komla, um, do we know who government official one is? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not attempt to name anybody because, hey, I mean, I'm just a poor journalist if I'm uh, using the medium we have now if I should go. Well, mm -hmm. I'm sure uh, the, uh, uh, the responsibility would be on my own self to go and prove. Yeah. So I will not dare yeah. uh, that. But I think that is quite shameful for the country. I mean, to have gone through all of this, uh, there's no doubt mm. that this happened within the John, uh, John, Dramani -led John Mills and John Dramani Mahama's administration. Right. There's absolutely no doubt. But I think it's a bit shameful. However, we need to be also very careful in the blames we are going to lay at the doorstep of right. one or two people. Mm. Because the Crown Court itself was very careful in saying that, yeah. look, they, they, they were not naming anybody mm. because they feel the people have not gone through a fair trial yet. Mm. So why would I go ahead right. and then say that? Mm. But be that as it may, I think that what is most shameful is the fact that we have allowed such multinational companies to take mm. undue advantage of us. Mm. Because if you look at all of this, the countries that have suffered in this Malaysia, Ghana, S Sri Lanka or so yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But the people who this uh, uh, French company, yeah. this Airbus, the people they are paying the money to are not we really the ones who have suffered. They are paying to the US, they are paying to the UK. And uh, France. And, France. Yes, and yeah. France. Mm. So I, 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 I really want to think about how how do we position ourselves when it comes to signing off contract? Mm. What sort of perusal do we do? Mm. What is the mode of transparency mm. that we look at when we are doing all this? Is look more often than not when this issue came on the floor of the house in 2011. Yes, the minority at the time raised issues. The, the concerns that the minority raised, then was the new patriotic party the yeah. absolutely they raised issues i remember i mean in reading the hands that three days ago papa also kuma raised issues about some suspected um 10 million or something three million said, i think uh, three million there, but, and Sabons also talks yeah about also things, raised yeah. an issue of that, but, yeah. uh, but well, you and i do not have that evidence but the issue yeah. is about the oversight responsibility mm. that parliament has can we have the mm. Parliament of the Republic of Ghana speaking sometimes with one voice. I'm talking about one voice in the interest of the country. Yeah. <laughs> Can we ever okay. have that? Let, let, let let take I mean, it's this is very, um, it's, it's, it's such an eyebrow raising deal. When I first heard this, I thought, wow, I mean, this is it's like it's coming out of a movie, really. Mm. And for this kind of deal to have gone undetected by our own people, you know, for uh, over 10 years now after it went down. It, it, it just casts quite a shadow on a public procurement mm -hmm. process because the UK company, uh, the, the, the French company Boeing came in because there was an expression of interest right. from the Ghanaian government. You know, so of course, there should have been a lot of oversight. I know that you know, the, the mi minority in parliament then raised a lot of questions. They talked about the three, because they, they go to the website of Boeing. Come mm. They see yeah. that this thing costs 30 million. And then you come to parliament and said, well, it's 33 million. And it's okay, so what's the, the three million for? And they start talking about things like night vision, equipment, the all kinds of things. Yeah, it the didn't really add up. was some add-ons yes, that were going to go but, into but, it. And then it said, but come that, now, when you look at the basic, staircase. <laughs> 
<laughs> the staircase of when the aircraft is going to basic <laughs> aircraft design, which I, I said, let me go online and see if I can have a look at it. When you look, they all have those things anyway. I mean, yeah. come on, night mm. vision. Mm. This technology has been around forever. So I don't know what happened with that one. There was a lot of back and forth. And then finally, it was sort of unanimously voted for because we needed the aircraft. But the minority right, then and the mm. majority now, the NPP, have clearly stated that they raised concerns against the deal. They did, like they always they were, do. And then they were questioned, did you stage a walkout, which would have been a major statement? Mm. Would you have? Like a and they said they didn't, but then they raised the concerns about how bad the deal was. But you didn't do much. So first it? of all, let's listen to what the NPP mm. have said about this. Then we'll also pick the side of the NDC when we return. On the face of the evidence presented, Government official one appears to be no other than former president John Dramani Mahama, now presidential candidate of the NDC for the 2020 presidential and general elections. The new patriotic party would have been content with the swift response of the government in referring the matter to the office of the special prosecutor. Indeed, we would have and we commend His Excellency the President for his swift decision to refer the matter to the Office of the Special Prosecutor. And clearly so, the President, right uh, when this news broke, uh, released a statement uh, asking the Office of the Special Prosecutor to immediately start the investigations into it. We'll hear what the NDC also has to say on this. But um, let me come back to you, um, mm. Nancy. Mm. Going into 2020, do mm. you think that this scandal would play any role at all? Or as Ghanaian, as they say, Ghanaians, we forget things easily. I think that um, because of the insinuations that have been made and um, the assumptions about who were involved in it, it could play a role. But I mean, this is clearly a deferred prosecution agreement. This mm. is a sort of corporate uh, plea bargain. It happens all the time. Mm. If they wanted to mention the names, they would have. But of course, they didn't involve Ghana government in reaching mm. you know, these uh, the final, uh, the agreements. final agreements and so on. Companies like Boeing employ about maybe 130,000 people, if you like, and 10,000 alone in the UK. So this is a sort of agreement they'll get. And the terms will depend on what they also, because I mean, this was a walk-in case, mm. you know. So at the end of the day, they're also given some sort of concession, you know, because they say, well, we've seen some disguised payments. They call it what success-based commission. But blah, you blah, think blah. that's all? So look into it. So I think that the UK, gov unless here, from here, we can get some sort of, in, in, injunction from here from a Supreme Court or something to get them to release names of people to get the court in Savak mm. to come up with names unless that happens no mm. names are going to be mentioned this bargain <laughs> has been signed and it's sealed it's yeah. a deferred prosecution they are not prosecuting the company Boeing okay and they're not going they, they might prosecute some executive members yes of Boeing okay. and some then, have even started some resigning have, right, to terror. right but for this to have a major impact on the election, I think more scandals will come up, and I think we'll have more to talk make about. This one. Okay, this, Kobla, yeah. <laughs> are, are we are we likely to have any sort of um, impact looking at the the magnitude of the scandal? Mm. This will be a punchline for the MVP against the so. candidate of John Romani Mahama. Mm. Already they've started it, so I mean it is suspected they will use it, but. The defense the NDC will be given is that well, nobody has been mentioned. Mm. This is and and the they keep saying it was the cost to Ghana anyway. Yeah. But, but the we're going to pay for it. So it was a loan. So let's listen to the day. NDC okay. now. Okay. <laughs> then we'll can come in and to wrap up. As far as the government of Ghana is concerned, it engaged in a legitimate transaction, purchased aircraft which are currently in use. What the documents point to is a transactional relationship between Airbus and what the documents refer to as an intermediary, intermediary five. They claim that this so-called intermediary five is, was related to a government of Ghana official, who they call government official one. They don't mention names. So we will be operating in the realms of absurdity and speculation. Yeah. Clearly, uh, I mean, uh, that is Felix Kwasio, who is a former Deputy Information Minister under the NDC government. So, uh, clearly, as he said, we, because we do not have specific names, yeah. we probably will be conjecturing. 
the, the, the defense. But you see, mm -hmm. when it comes to uh, the average Ghanaian, mm -hmm. once yeah. something is said in a negative light, it sinks to so deep into it. Sort of uh, so now mm -hmm. the NDC has a daunting tax to do a lot of work in trying to get this uh, message out of the minds of, of people, people who were not on the face of it say that, okay, there was a judgment, but nobody's name was called mm. yeah okay. mm. so i mean it's 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 but well the description of the person yeah. you know elected yeah and you know, and so and it <laughs> when you were in office <laughs> right it happened when you were in office so, so but i think to. that i think that I mean, we still will have these things going on even now. Mm, yeah. and what due yes. diligence are we doing? What yeah. sort of oversight so, responsibility? Yeah. So, I think our present administration is learning I from right. those things. Like what are they saying yeah. that, you know, agents broker deals everywhere with mm, you for these huge know. companies. They're always intermediary. So, this thing is probably still happening, like yep. said. So, well, um, clearly, you also have had your say on this, uh, and you've been talking about it all week since it started. There are several other national issues of interest that uh, you're talking about if you go to our website 3 news.com i'm sure you'll get to see a lot more news that we are covering for you this has been the stance i am martin isidu date uh government official one on behalf of my two intermediaries komla kluche and then also nancy vukania want to say a big thank you to you for making time to watch us this evening do have a good evening and as always stay positive <laughs>